so close. So close. Hello and welcome back to another portfolio <laughs> review. I've been doing a lot of my Patreon reviews alone, but it's time to bring you along for the ride. So you wanna get into animation. So you wanna be a character designer, a visual development artist, an illustrator. You've come to the right place. I can do all of that stuff because I am a character designer at Disney, previously Netflix, Nickelodeon, Warner Brothers, etc. So allow a professional to guide you in how to make your portfolio industry standard. If you want a portfolio review, there are spots maybe or maybe not available on my Patreon. But enough yapping, let's start with the reviews. But actually, before we start, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Artlist.io, I know you've heard of it, we've all heard of it. And did you know that all the songs in this video is actually found on Artlist? But Artlist doesn't just have thousands of songs and licensing. They also have sound effects and stock footage and graphics titles and templates and everything. You can even get an Artlist plugin on Premiere or whatever you use to edit videos to create more cinematic footage without ever leaving the program. There are subscriptions for every type of creator, whether you just want music and effects or if you want to create videos with footage and stock videos. Artlist is everything you need to create something cool. Whether you're a beginner at editing videos or a veteran that needs a more efficient workflow. So here's how I should have started my video using Artlist. Picture this, you're an old man. It's not your fault you're old or a man, but you wanna do art, you wanna learn art. Lucky for you, I am a beautiful young woman with knowledge of art. I come up to you and I help you, I give you advice. I tell you what to improve in your art so you can get a job and be happy. And finally, it comes true. You're a happy old man, no longer sad and miserable or old. And I, your sexy teacher, looks at you and smiles. Another student learned. So download Artlist today using the link in my description for an extra two months free. Let's get to reviewing some portfolios. Next we have Valeria. That was my D&D character's name, so I love this name. I pulled my portfolio together to have something to start with. I know I can prove a lot from it. Okay, so let's take a look starting with the composition of your portfolio. Oh, I don't even have to tell you. You know we have a scroll through format. We know you have your email, your name, and exactly what it is. I know you've been studying my portfolio and that is wonderful. So, you know, we have your name, character design, perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. Portfolio personal work about. So clear, so concise, no notes. About me, ooh, so close, so close. I really want to see your email on the bottom of this. Imagine you had that there. That'd be amazing. I know you have it here, but I hate this button. I'm never going to use it. We have personal work. Wow, this is a beautiful clown. Great intro page. You have a little bit of your process. I think that's wonderful. I always say have a flat splash page. If you don't have like environments or visual development moments, like this is a great way to fill up a page so it feels nice and big and punchy. Nutcracker lineup. Okay, I'm not fully aware of the Nutcracker story but I'm gonna assume that there's a ballerina there's a nut and I know there's a rat prince maybe there's a fairy godmother add one more character and I don't know who you would add because I'm not familiar with the story maybe there's like rat henchmen imagine that you know the fairy was off on that side and then there was two little rat henchmen next to him and they're first of all a little bit of your comedic relief and they're also like two variations of his army um you'd show what two little doopy characters look like i think that'd be pretty strong i love this character i think this is wonderful all your characters are very cool i like how you know these two characters are a little bit more realistic this character is exaggerated because he's this wild rat if we were gonna push it because you know we push this rat character with this tiny little crown i'm gonna just throw some things out there to push these characters a little bit more and maybe that's not the direction you want to go into because it's a little bit too exaggerated because a lot of this is pretty realistic like i could imagine his chest even being further out like this rat has a huge chest but what if his furry like his uh what's it called this thing was even bigger to show the regalness of how much this rat thinks he's everything maybe this character even even to make an even crazier silhouette. Maybe he has part of uh, the bo that Baroque like uh, head, like neck thing behind him to show 
that he's huge because he probably wants people to think he's huge but he's actually just a rat. That could be fun for a silhouette. You know, this girl seems like she's not this big flashy character so I think that this outfit works for her. I think that's wonderful. One thing I'm gonna say is that if we look at this in black and white, the color of this purple is so similar to the color of her skin that I would either make this much lighter or much darker like little pink sock and honestly at this point i'm just having fun nothing that i'm saying is of any consequence right now and her hair kind of sticking out of that silhouette just a little bit more so we could see a little bit of secondary action maybe like all that i'm saying right now is so nitpicky because i think that these are excellent designs like i basically have no notes on this character if you want to keep him the way it is i love his colors if you make a very clear reason for wh what shape your your dress is doing how you want it to be clear how the construction of everything works. We have some poses from your nutcrackers. Clara is the ballerina. Ooh, this is cool. This should be your second page. Oh, imagine that, that his coat is just full of a bunch of rats and there's not one rat because maybe there's one big rat head. You never see them because that's how mischievous they are. That's how little they are. This should be your second page because it's so slay. And then you have this moment right here. This is terrific, this is awesome. Put this on the top of your portfolio page. And then underneath this, I would have some Rat King exploration. I think that this is so underwhelming compared to this. Like this is such a cool, a cool fun page that I want your Rat King exploration to hook me just as much. And maybe that means coloring some of them. Like explorations aren't meant to be on model or tight. Like I would really encourage you to play around with color and texture and more concepts. Like if this character is like this, like he's like, oh, and I am evil. And what did he look like when you were doing this? Does he have like a, I don't know, like a king staff thing? <laughs> If he's this character right here, where is his personality shining through? Like here I can see that he's like the seedy little rat and he's like the sneaky little nasty little boy because he's hunched over like that. But this doesn't quite give me that same idea. Here maybe he's like trying to crawl away as he's like defeated. How does that look like? I feel like you've pretty edgy here. So I could think like maybe he's got blood dripping out of his mouth, right? Maybe he's all beat up right? Maybe he's actually not wearing his crown. Maybe he's reaching for his crown because he's defeated. But the last thing he wants to do is grab his crown. Like story moments like that. Like how can you show who this rat is? What's his personality? And just some loose ideas on how far you can push him. Then we have some poses and expressions and we just have poses of him and then we just basically have expressions of her. I think that works. I think that another page you're missing is characters interacting. I think that you should have it, because they're falling in love, right? Isn't that the Nutcracker story? I think you should have a moment where the Nutcracker and the ballerina have a, like maybe two poses together that they have that moment. He's, he's looking into her eyes and he's saying, Clara. And she's saying, yes. And he's holding her face like this. And she's holding his face back. I think these poses are wonderful. You know, having one hero pose colored can really make your whole page look really cohesive. Like see a little bit of line variation just so we can see it better. Just some gray tones on some important parts like the pants and the jacket are like in a gray so then we can kind of see the separation of him. The overlapping lines are thicker and then these parts are darker. Like the way you did here where the boots are dark, I think that's excellent because his boots will be dark and you know exactly what you're looking at. You know, cause some of these get a little bit lost because the line is so fine. And then maybe you need one more page out of this, or I don't know, if this is your first character design portfolio, maybe you should put a turnaround of your Nutcracker. And then you have a lineup of a second story. The story is not very clear. All these characters are, you know, of this world and normal. And this character is the only character with something crazy going on here. So either show that crazy thing to the other characters or make it clear in the story of why this character has that. So maybe you have a call out page of just this character and it's all of her poses with her hand things. And then maybe I'm trying to turn that darkness off. I hate this, please turn this off with the dark. I don't like it. You know, maybe you have a page of her poses with her, you know, scary hand of how it comes to be. Is it normal sometimes? Is she like, oh my God, my hand's transforming. And in the second page, it's the characters interacting. If she's the villain and he's the protagonist and maybe there's something sexy going on because there's some sexy characters. There's that moment where she's got her finger underneath his chin 
and she's like enticing him. She's like, come, come over here, you, you strong man. A character moment to, to really indicate who these characters are to each other, what their relationships are. Because right now, these three characters don't mean anything to me, right? Without a clear indication of their story. I think that these are very consistently drawn. That's wonderful. For some of them, to show his personality even more and to understand who he is, I'd like to see who he's yelling at. This drawing doesn't make any sense. I can't believe you kidnapped my wife! There's a side view like this. I like to see the back brow and maybe even the back eyelash. It adds a little bit more dimension to the face. Okay. Okay, there's something going on with this story. You need to explain further. You need I am interested, I'm invested. I think you could definitely expand these two projects and I think that would be enough for your portfolio, to be honest. A lineup, a turn maybe, poses, characters interacting, expressions. I also wanna see more variations of like concepts. So like, I want you to kind of refocus on these characters and making them different from each other because as of right now, these characters could all be the same person to me, right? What makes them unique? What makes them different? What makes us want to watch their story? The only character that's different that makes me interested is her. So create concept variations of these characters. I'd especially like to see how you got to this rat a little bit more. Oh, or this character. This is actually, you know, a fairy character is so interesting. You could have all different types of wing shapes, of dress shapes. You know, if this was inspired by a flower, maybe have one reference image of that flower. And then, you know, other variations of her concept is different flowers. And then you have a photo of a different flower and then you have her dress looking like that. Work is very strong, but we need to hone it in slightly. Is this a nutcracker moment? This should also, I think this should be in your portfolio. Like imagine the title Nutcracker was right here. I also love this clown. That's a beautiful clown. Beautiful work. I love to see it. And I'd love to see you expand on this a little bit more. Great work. Let's move on to the next one. Did you know I actually spent the last 20 minutes recording this and I didn't click record? So Tarek, sorry if I'm butchering your name, wants to be a character designer illustrator, but I wouldn't mind venturing into story or his dev. Let me know how I can strengthen it to get a job. Okay. Before we get into some specifics about your portfolio, I want to look at your website design because I'm a sucker for some good aesthetics and before you get mad at me, it matters. So first of all, if we go into your website and first thing is we see your portfolio. It says character design portfolio. It says your name, you have email and ooh, I hate this. I don't have my mail set up. Does anybody? I hate that app. I would have your email written out clearly in bold, you know, so it's clear. So we have illustration and I see in your portfolio, your character design portfolio, we have some things that we can combine. Like we don't want to have multiple clicks. We want, we want to assume that whoever's looking at your portfolio is going to click once, maybe twice. So you want everything to be scrollable. So when I look through here, I want to be able to scroll through and see all your portfolio pieces. You have a lot of work. We really have to condense it. Your first project's a mirror in the gin, right? I want to see, first of all, your name, your email, and the logo of the project in every single corner of every single page. Because once you scroll through them in your pages like that, it needs to be clear when your one project ends and when the next one begins. I also want to see like a splash page because in your illustration work, I see that one of your projects over here from the same thing is tucked away on a, on a different page. We don't want that. Imagine this was the first page and then you had your name and your position in your email. I see this character is happy with his gin. Wonderful, happy, happy, happy. We have a turnaround. The first thing I notice is that in every like block, there's him and the character, and then here there isn't. And I'm wondering, okay, is this just a random camel? Is this him transformed into one? Because he kind of has that look on his face being like, oh boy, I've been transformed into a camel again. If it is him, you know, have the same color as the skin tone, maybe have his vest on his shoulders to make that clear. And if not, then I'm not sure having like a random other character that we introduced for the first time here is the correct move. Uh, we have some more poses. Oh, and we have the camel. Okay, so the camel is the third character. So what I'd recommend you do is I recommend your first page well, your first page is your splash page from your illustration work. That's your name and your email. Your second page is the lineup. So you have your little boy character, you have your Jin character, you have your camel who is like the animal friend character. Here's their bump. And then who else could we introduce? Who is the villain of this story, right? Who is the old lady mentor of this story with the cane, right? That guides this little boy. 
right? We want at least five characters to really engage the audience and tell the story properly. I also see, you know, when he's doing adventures, he's only smiling and being happy. What happens if he's in danger? What's the relationship with these two characters if he's in danger? I want to see different scenarios that this boy's in instead of happy and adventure. I also see that this pose right here is basically the same pose as this one, although he's not running. So I would actually get rid of one of those poses. I'd combine these pages. So there's one page of his face, his expressions, his poses, more where he's sad, where he's angry. Is his goal just to be a happy little boy or revenge on his father who was kidnapped? I think a turnaround is a good thing to have, although your turnaround is very inconsistent. But first of all, I get rid of these lines. You don't need them in your portfolio. I wouldn't do it. It also just makes it clear how much things aren't lined up. Like the bottom of his chin doesn't quite match up with the bottom of there. A lot of things like the rotation of his face changes and it's most obvious in his hat. So his hat would actually match up in this same angle the entire time and I know that oftentimes we would probably want to cheat it a little bit. This is such a simple character. We want to show as much as we can not cheating it, especially if you want to show your technical skill. Like his nose tip is here, so his nose tip should be here. And that would make it the same angle throughout all of this. His hair tuft is here. So I would put his hair tuft right there and then right there. And then it'd be asymmetrical, right? And then his nose tilt would be a little bit higher. Oh, and I also wouldn't have writing like a little blurb about your story because if the story is visually clear then we don't need that and also I didn't read it I don't think anybody will read it so for this story I'm not gonna read the blurb I'm gonna take a look at what we see we have this demon character true form disguise form okay and then we have a lineup wonderful so if I weren't gonna read the blurb my first impression of what the story is here is that we're working in a demon office and we have Karen as the, the main character at the office and these are all the office workers. Um, so let's read the blurb. Demon baby we follow, demon toddler, as he causes chaos in the human world. While his manager Karen is trying to keep him on track. Okay, so that's not what I thought it was gonna be. So the first thing you need to do is make this your first page because You've given us a lot to work on by creating the order of this page as being, you know, this Karen character. So what I do is I'd make this the first page and actually I'd make this at the top of your portfolio just because there's so many characters, there's a lot of variations and shapes. There's a lot of interest here. I think so far this is your strongest character work. So, you know, if your lineup is your first page, your second page is your demon baby with all his mischievous ways, his expressions, a few poses. Your third page is, you know, Karen and the baby doing some, uh, some joint poses together, some interacting poses like, oh, you've got baby running away with a doll on fire. He's going, ha ha ha, I'm so evil. And Karen's like, no, don't, don't do that. And they're running. I have like a couple more poses like that. That shows so much of the story that we didn't see here. And then maybe the fourth page is Karen. You know, we have proper pose where she's near human. And then the second pose is her like with this fire being angry. But then I wouldn't have this pose here because it's the same as these two poses here. Try to not have any writing at all. So true form, disguise form, don't need it. Very happy Karen, very normal, like lady. And then you have like angry Karen after. If your drawings are clear, you don't need to explain it with your words. In general, you have so many projects that I think that you should choose one or two and really expand on them, like your favorite projects, your most important projects. I think for this bird lady, you can really combine it all onto one page, just as a one-off page, like your favorite poses and your favorite expressions from this character, because I think that this is a really funny story. I was thinking for this, like, because, you know, I don't know how much you want to lean into that comedy, but like, imagine she was in this side view silhouette. First of all, we'd see her hooked nose even more, which would add to this bird-like appearance. And then the, the comedy, comedy would come from this silhouette of her spitting up her goop into the bird's mouths. That'd be like a funny little story element. It would show the humor and it would show, you know, this angle that you have in a more interesting way. Cause then you don't have to have this angle because you have it in that other view. And because you're only making one page out of this, you need to show your very strongest work in every single pose. So this is a very cute character. If I look in your illustration work, you have so much 
of this world, so why not combine it? This illustration here to intro that story, and then you have your page with how you came to be this character. I also noticed some illustrations from Demon Baby, like this would be such a good intro page. Imagine you had Demon Baby written right here with your name and stuff like that, and then you had your lineup and all those other pages that I suggested. I think that'd be pretty strong. I think that should be your first intro page, actually. If you want to show variation of how you came to this character, I would show completely different poses, right? And with slightly different like body types, like, you know, this outfit, she was looking like this with her tentacles. Like her head was more of a circle. And she had like two tentacles, her body shape was completely different. You know, like show every step of your process in so few drawings, no two drawings are even similar in your portfolio. That's how different I want everything to be. If she's an influencer queen, like if she is on live stream and maybe she's got a hot temper, if she's seeing her follower count go down because she did something controversial, right? Like, what does that look like? Having sitting down poses, having action poses. And then we have a page with um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I think these are good pages, but I think some other ones are stronger. And because you have so much work, I think you're gonna have to cut a few things. I would actually like to see them exaggerated even more. Like this character right here, what would he look like if he was all beard? Because their proportions are pretty cartoony, right? If you push it even more and that's his, that's his cane and that's his legs, like making them all so different and unique would make this page so much more interesting if this character's turban was really big this character's beard was really big like what makes each character unique like he's like angry make him so angry and it's so much in his pose that he's an angry little man maybe he's trying to hug this character because that's how happy he is and he's clearly annoyed he's looking over at him right these characters can almost be interacting that would add so much more interest to the story. Cause right now I'm saying maybe you should cut it. But if you rework it where all these characters are so distinct, I think that this could be a very strong page because we haven't seen something like this in your portfolio. And then personal works. Because we're gonna be expanding your portfolio, I have personal works in a different page. I'd actually get rid of your illustration because you're going to take a lot of your illustration work and you're going to combine it with your existing projects because so many of these are like are corresponding to your existing pieces so i would get rid of any fan art you have here as well really unless you put in your personal works overall your portfolio is getting there you have a great start choose one or two of these stories expand upon it create more poses expressions characters interacting and never have any similar drawings on your portfolio excellent work and that's all the time we have for today let me know if you learned something i hope you did and if you want your portfolio reviewed or your art critiqued take a look at my Patreon and see if there are spots available. And if you wanna get better at character design, why don't you take my Domestica course? Very cool. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment stuff. And other than that, I will see you next time. Bye.